Here's a brief video on how to add byte ramps using Mesh Mixer. So we use the um, EasyRx software to manage our 3D models. And you can see if you go to the upper arch and download it, and then import it into Mesh Mixer, you will have an upper arch. And we traditionally do byte ramps on the upper, but you could obviously do this on any teeth you want. So once you make it larger and transform the image to a format that is comfortable for you to look at, you will now bring in one of the mesh mixer shapes. They're in the primitives and it's basically a cube. And you'll take the cube and using the transform tools like I'm showing here, you're gonna shrink it down to a cube that's small enough so that when you bring it onto the teeth, it actually has kind of a, a pyramid shape. So right now, I'm just changing the height and the depth of the cube. And then the next step will be to use the triangles that you see in the image there to drag that cube closer to the tooth so it's into the position that we want to see it. So right now it's kind of touching the teeth and um, I am actually going to uh, accept that position and uh, eventually transform the model itself. I like to have the base facing the grid as opposed to the um, teeth facing the grid. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna select using the object browser, the model itself, and I'm gonna rotate it with the base now facing down to the grid level. And I think this is a much more comfortable way to look at the models. So there's my cube again. Uh, I'm gonna accept that, tra that transformation. I'm gonna click the uh, little cube in the object browser and I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna transform it. You always have to click transform every time you wanna move or influence that shape. I'm gonna move it onto the uh, teeth itself and try and position it where I'd like it for a bite ramp. So we're getting closer right here. And I'm always using those triangles. That's kind of the way to globally move it. I'm getting closer right here. So I wanna have it about a millimeter or two from the incisal edge. Um, I basically want the occlusal surface of the uh, bite ramp to be parallel to the occlusal surface of the bite. And then once I do that, I hit the combine, uh, the I'm sorry, the duplicate button, and I go into transform again. And I can actually just take that one that I just made, and usually the centrals are very similar. They just need to be rotated into position. So when you look down uh, from the occlusal surface, um, not only should the occlusal surface of, be parallel to the occlusal surface of the teeth, the occlusal surface of the bite ramp, but also, um, the angles should be somewhat uh, parallel to the incisal edge of the teeth, so that requires just a little bit of rotation. So you can see right here, I'll give just a little bit of movement and a little bit of rotation. Um, I duplicated uh, for the laterals. Now the laterals are a little bit smaller um, and thinner, so I'm gonna change the shaping there. I'm gonna change the height, and now I'm gonna change the width. And I'm always checking, and I'm gonna change the thickness of it, I'm always checking from the facial surface to make sure that that cube does not go through the facial. If it did, you would see that lighter gray color coming through the um, facial. So I duplicated it one more time, hit the transform button, and I'm sliding it over now onto the, uh, rotating a little bit, and then sliding it down using the triangle tool onto the left side lateral, the upper left lateral and making sure that um, it's the heights are, you want the heights of the flat surface of the bite ramps to be about the same so that ideally when the teeth come down and touch it in the in a retainer, whatever device you're doing, you could be using this for a retainer. Um, you could also use this to fill it to, um, to create bite ramps on the lingual of the upper anterior teeth. So um, I got it pretty much in the position we want right there. And again, um, I want to make sure it doesn't come through the facial. So I'm always checking the facial of the teeth to make sure that that doesn't come through. Now I'll usually save this setup. Um, I'll save it just to have it um, so that I'm saving the mesh mixer file so I can go back and use it if I need to. And then the final step will be to combine all those objects and hit the combine button, select them all and combine. And now I'll export it as an STL file uh, onto my desktop so that I can now save it for printing. And what you end up with is a file with, in, in this case, we wanted to create 
uh, bite ramp on the lingual of, of the upper two to two. And um, we're ready to print. If you have any questions or concerns, you can reach out. And uh, thanks for following. Have a great day.